I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick. I learned from my teammate, Karina Lady Barber. She's an amazing barber. All right, so this technique is, you, know, you gotta be super careful when you're doing it, okay? So this is just one technique in creating texture. Corey, Corey. Stop it. <laughs> and you guys can see, I'm just barely tapping, barely tapping the hair. You know, because if I go any shorter than that, then I'm going to gouge him out, right? And then I'm going to get a bad review, and he's going to talk bad about me on social media. And he won't say it to my face. So, this is just one technique right here in creating texture. So you guys see what I'm doing, correct? How many of you guys knew how to do this? Want me to give it to you? Or even tried how, or even tried doing it. So essentially what I did is I had my model bring his head down and I tapped it like in little pyramids. Hills, valleys, hill valleys, right? So I did tap, 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 tap. And I did it all the way just before the crown area, all the way down towards the temple. And you guys can see, watch. Ooh, look at that. You guys can see that texture right there. Alright, so I'm gonna start with my first section. I'm gonna use my sectioning tool. I'm gonna to start about a half inch before my bead and I'm gonna take a triangular section. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that straight out. So when I come in with my looper, which is the next thing, I'm gonna be pulling the hair and placing the looper right on that dot that I placed in the beginning. So I'm gonna take my looper, I'm gonna pull it right through. Now notice my looper is going to stay right at the scalp. Pull that hair through, take my bead, and pull it right through. So I'm going to take those right down, I'm going to keep the hair to the side, and I'm going to turn it. So it's going to be right to the right side of that scalp. So now the last thing we're going to do with this before we start sewing, you want to take 
of this one with has free movement. And 30% of this one. And 30% of the middle. So you're going to be connecting the two. Right. I can make sure that when I grab that knee with my flyer, there's no suction. My vertical knee. All right. So I'm just giving you guys a little demonstration. First, that we need to talk to you about our machine driven left. These are two to three times more density than our hand type. So if you've got someone that's got what we like to call an artery free, the Chewbacca here, where it's just like, whoa, you're going to need two or three blocks per platform to match that density. Up to four. If you're looking at hand type, it could be six to ten. The difference is, these are going to lay flatter, smoother, and more flexible. Not so much bulk of the scalp, right? Both are great, but today we're demonstrating both in one. So, all right. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up from ear to ear. And then I'm going to place a little clip just to hold it. platform on the other side. Now standing behind my client because I'm still... We're going to go ahead and line it up. Beautiful. So, I tied my string four knots. I'm going to hold on to this and just in front of the first B. So, I like to place my first one right behind my first beat. So we're going to start just in front of the beat, okay? So I'm going to go behind the platform like this goes. I'm going to come underneath my left. Now when the leader comes through, I'm going to separate the screen. It's the only time I separate it is right in the beginning, and this is what we call our anchor stitch. Our lock stitch. You gotta love sequins and string. Like the stick. So from here, I'm going to be doing three more forward and three back. It's going to create a blanket stitch. So this time, I'm separating my string left and right. I'm not splitting it. I'm going to get it in a okay. Oh, I yeah, I'm going to guide it all the way to the top. It's really important that you guide the string all the way to the top. And set it right in. You can see a little excess popping up from our anchor. Just give it a little snip. Beautiful. So now I'm going to come in. Continue my two stitches and separating left and right. Yeah, I got a question over here and I want to be able to answer it. So the question is left compared to individual pieces. There's all methods for all types of hair, so it's not about what's better. However, what you get with left is I like to think of it as a sheet of hair, so I don't have to go through and brick lay everything. And it's a lot quicker. It's more cost effective for your client. They can still use this hair four to five times, so they can still get a whole year. year worth of hair. It, of course, depending on how they take care of it. Our last stitch. We're gonna bring it all the way up to the top. Absolutely. I chose in my very first platform to do two machine webs so I could really get that density at the very bottom. And then in my second 
platform, I went ahead and used two of the hand tied and the very top of an A2 hand tied. Clearly, she's blonde, and we know that things show up a little bit easier. And she has fine hair, so the machine lab is good. So this is a picture of myself. If you want to practice and do a design on, on Rob the original, you can. You can actually scratch it. Like if it was a scratch-off ticket, you know what I'm saying? And you can practice designs on it. I sell these on my Instagram. If you go to the link on my bio, you can buy one. There's plenty of pictures on here, different models that you can do designs on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this one I did too. So you can actually practice before you do it on somebody. It's only $24.99. You can buy it on my What an awesome tool. So, where can they connect with you as if they don't know? Well, easiest is Instagram, Stego31. Um, you can find me the same way on YouTube. I just started a YouTube page, uh, like I said at the beginning, to kind of spread more knowledge on just like the basics of barbering and what to, how to build clients, uh, the difference between tool te technology so that you guys can understand it. Um, so everything is, is pretty similar. You definitely want to stay up with her because coming again for the date to be determined is the Gold Zone 2. That is going to be her master class. That is going to be a very intimate, up close uh, educational experience. An amazing kit. All kinds of stuff that you definitely want to connect with Sophie on. So look out for the Gold Zone 2. Last yeah. but not least, the one and only Patty Cuts. Where we at, bro? Thanks, Vinny. Um, so basically what I did here was the high skin taper, blowout, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what I did was I started first with my trimmer line, then I put a half line in, faded out the trimmer line, and then faded down into the half line from a one and a half. Right, and again, I didn't use a half guard, I used, I used the manipulation technique of the blade, right, to get that line out between the one and the, and the no guard. So that's just some of the stuff I went over today. Uh, remember to keep your lines dark. Right, go customize a clipper. Really, it's a really cool experience. First one you can ever do in the show. And where do people find you? If oh. I want to connect with you. Uh, Patty Cuts on Instagram. P A T T Y underscore C U T S. You guys heard it here. Did you guys have a good time? Did you guys take something away from this? You guys have three incredible artists here. Network with them, talk with them, connect with them. You also have a gorgeous model and Hawk the Visionary here. Oh, yeah. Play with the custom FX. My man Tito is back there making a clipper right now. Those get delivered to you in hand today. Definitely check out the Vibe FX. Less is always more with bangs. And again, I like to stay really calm throughout my whole lightening process. So I like to clip everything away really, really nicely. I don't like it to be messy. So we're just gonna get one foil. That's all we want for the bang. More than one, you will overdo it. Mark my words, you will overdo it. You want the bottom of her bang to be dark. You want to maintain that depth. This light piece is really going to show less is more when it comes to bangs. We're going to tilt her head down a skosh. Generally, when we cut bangs, they're at a triangle, right? It's always at a triangle. So I'm just going to go straight across that triangle. That's all I'm going to lighten on those bangs. That's the only section that I'm going to lighten. If I lighten more than that, her bangs are going to look blown out. 100% they're going to look blown out. Also, she's going to freak out. Those are her bangs. She needs some dark, okay? So that's all I'm going to lighten, and less is more. It's going to really create a beautiful pop. Where did that one foil I just had go? So traditional foil with this one, if you use the trust paper, it's just going to slip. Just save yourself. I don't tease it. Okay, you can tease it if you want to. I don't, I just feather it. I still want it to be really saturated. Saturated all the way through. I like to use a really nice soft bristle brush. And I like to go vertically too, because it is a little more like harder on it, so I can get through and saturate all the way through, but I'm not creating crazy lines. Again, this is still Air Libre with 20 volume. This is still that open air lightener with 20 volume and the Bond Builder as well. I'm gonna take the flat side of my brush now. I'm gonna feather up. Okay, 
a really nice feather. She is zigzagged underneath, so we have that extra insurance. And also by flicking it with the flat side of my brush, it's feathering it really nicely, just like my cut hands would. Folding it, again, I don't like to crease the hair, so I'm not gonna fold it a bunch of times. I'm just gonna fold it once, fold in those edges to lock it in. That's how you do a bang. So, so easy, so simple. We overthink the bangs a lot of the time, but they're really, really simple, you guys. Just a really nice highlight right on top, really skinny, chunky, whatever you wanna do, but leave a lot of that depth underneath. I'm not looking to straighten this hair. I want to bevel the ends. That's all I want to do. So watch. It's just a matter of doing this. Normally, here we are with a blow dryer, boom, boom, trying to do this. But look at what Sam's doing. Think differently, do differently, and say differently in order to get the attention of the client. But use effective ways to get what it is that you need. So now, this will give me that bevel that I want that fringe to have. And you can just start to see how I got that bevel. Rather than using a comb. In most cases, is we might use a comb. So now I'm going to come through, just bevel. That's my heat source, just like a blow dryer. Here, bevel. Here, bevel. Bevel. Now watch me just roll, roll, roll. I'm allowing that to cool down in a beveled state. Now look at that fringe. I've got some bend out of it. Now we're ready to cut it. So how are we going to approach cutting a curtain fringe? We're going to go with a guide in the center. Remember, curtain fringes happen from what kind of part? Come on guys, what kind of part? Middle. Client walks in and says, I put my hand on the side. I want a curtain fringe. I'm going, no, it happens from the middle. But see, my partner on the side. All right, you're going to have a curtain on one side and a drape on the other side. So they need to understand, guys, it happens from the middle part. So let's work with the middle part, Braden, right down the center. Watch what I'm going to do now. I want everything to be over directed to the center. I want the top long, but I want the top soft. I want the edge soft. So watch the, the comb. I'm going to lay the comb. I'm going to give you a profile view so you can see this. Okay? I'm going to layer the comb, lay it flat on the head. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to stand this up. So I'm going to give it like Brayden says, a kickstand. Once I'm here, I follow that and I'm vertical. But look at my degree of elevation. It's all horizontal. I'm not up here with the curtain fringes. I want to build weight on those. They're not layered through to the point of the triangle. So now I come here, kickstand up. Now, how short do you take these, Sam? In order for this to curtain, it needs length. So I'm going to use the tip of her nose as my length. Now I'm going to come through, I'm going to follow that guide vertically and just come down and I'm going to go through and just notch into that. Now watch the next section. My next section is going to go horizontal, parallel to that. So I'm going to go horizontal, parallel to that, so I go horizontal to your eye, vertical to my eye. I come through, take that section, I over direct to the center again, there's my guide, comb flat, kickstand, up, horizontal, drop, elevation, looking for my guide, there's my guide, and not straight down. Now each section I take is going to be the same thing. This here comes my next parallel section. Watch the comb, flat, kickstand up, hand, follow to the guide, fold, see the guide, and once again notch. Now here's where the key is, right? This is my last section here. Watch. Most people are doing this. Comb on top, you just brought this down. Now it's shorter. Watch Sam. I take this, I put my comb here to the shape of the head, I comb to the center, and I kickstand up. Now look where this hair is. It's way up here, not down here. Big difference, my friends, in terms of getting the length at the point of that curtain fringe. So I come through and notch into that. Now watch the angle. Most people, when they do a curtain fringe, they might take a diagonal back section, over direct it, boom, 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 boom. Okay, what, what's, look what Sam did. I put my layering in and I got the angle all in one motion without having to do two things. Round of applause if you're learning something so far. Woo. Awesome. Then continue to be on this upside doing.
and then you don't really have a plan, you just kind of let your paintbrush do the work and you look at it. Sometimes I like to take a step back and see it from afar because that's how other people are going to be seeing it. So I like to see how it's playing out as I'm going along. But the two main things is just having enough colors to create two different gradients and making sure that those colors are going to be cohesive with one another because you want to make sure that it all flows. Talk to me a little bit about how using B3 in your vivids has changed the way that you look at vivid color. Um, I mean, the way that I look at them is just that they're brighter, but also she came here yesterday, and a good example is that she came here yesterday, I did her hair about two, maybe three weeks ago. At that point in the past, because it's so short and she washes the hair a little bit more often, it would have already been almost faded blonde again. It literally looked like we had just done it, and just a little bit of root. So uh, the color longevity is, is the most important part for me, especially for clients who, like I said, they want something that they don't have to come in every two weeks. and get it done again, so uh, that's been one huge improvement for me and my clients, I love that. So it really helps yeah. increase the longevity of your fashion Absolutely. color. A lot. And you guys, you already know this, but when you're doing fashion color like this, this is more of like a surface level stain for the hair, right? It's not something that's going to be used or utilized with the peroxide to open that cuticle and dry the color in the hair. So it's more of a stain. Now what B3 does is, it's an oil based product. There's no water in it, so it doesn't dilute it down. But the oil helps to kind of drive the color to the hair, and after five minutes of processing, it sticks the color molecules to the hair. So not only are you getting really even, nice saturation, but you're also getting more color longevity from any color that you're doing. So it's not just fashion colors, but let's say you're doing a ashy level 11 blonde, right? The main problem we have with that is after two weeks, they wash their hair and it starts to turn really yellow again, right? So what B3 will do for that particular client is balance out their, their toner, help that toner last just a little bit longer. We guarantee about two weeks extra longevity when you utilize B3. What's that? Can you add it to permanent color? That's a good question. B3 can be added to any brand and any type of color service. And when you're adding it to permanent color, raise your hand if you've ever had issues with gray coverage. You have that stubborn or resistant gray. B3, again, because it's an oil-based product and it helps to drive the color into the hair, in turn you get better gray coverage. Does anybody ever have that client that they pick up your back tail comb and they start scratching themselves when they're processing? They're itchy, right? B3, we actually take a natural version of a sugar, we call it a saccharide, and we put that in the product. It buffers a client that has any type of chemical sensitivity. So an old school trick was using like sweet and low inside of your lightener. No longer do you use that. Keep it for your coffee. B3 already has a concentrated version of that sugar inside of the product. So it really creates a nice buffer for those clients. Question? So like I said, this last year I've worked a lot with barbers and I've seen the transition of barbers getting into color and it is blowing up rather rapidly. In fact, last year most of my shows and classes were with barber-based uh, audience, which is really cool. They're really curious because they want to be good at it. And for me, if I want to be good, I want the best stuff and I want to have security, which for me, that's what B3 is. So um, not only with barbers getting comfortable with it, a lot of male clients have never colored their hair before. I've experienced that. They're like, is this going to hurt? What is it going to do? How is it going to lift? So I explain to them always, this is what I put in there. This is what it does for you. And I always like recommend them going home with B3 shampoo and a deep conditioner. 99% of the time, they listen. And they love it and they're back. So um, if you're someone who maybe does both barbering and coloring, or if you're just a barber who wants to get into coloring, or if you're a colorist who wants to work with barbers, it's just a great tool. So uh, like he said, B3 is for everybody and that's what I want to demonstrate here today. So I'm glad that I can showcase something a little bit more unconventional than I guess some people are used to.